Hello and welcome to this uh, new uh, Neon video. This is all about version 1.11 and all the exciting new features that we've managed to cram in this version. I mentioned in previous videos that we wanted to bring Helium and Neon uh, more in line with each other in terms of user interface and in the last version of Helium we introduced a whole load of new swipe gestures which went down well so we've, we've actually brought them to Neon so that's one new addition we're going to go over today This version also introduces the ability to import and export slice markers within uh, WAV files. So if you're a user of Twisted Wave or Auditor, you're in look there, and I'm going to demonstrate that today. We've also added Experimental uh, Novation Launchpad Mini options. This is specific to Launchpad Mini as, of it, as it stands now. It's an experimental feature which I'm going to expand in future versions, but I'd like to go over that today. Now if you remember, in the previous version of Neon, uh, we introduced a new Synchro Start Mode, which was part of the uh, launch options. But this uh, feature really was specific to the launch button. Um, and just so that we can differentiate those, I've added uh, a launch button options section now with its own set of options. Uh, it, and the Synchro Start has migrated to this window. You'll also notice we've added a new mode called Clip End. Uh, this works in a similar fashion to uh, Exclusive Mode, uh, only it switches when the clip has completed playing. And you'll also notice now we can change the quantize setting and determine whether the clips start immediately at the next beat or the next measure. Now I did mention in the opening titles that uh, we've added an experimental option for the Launchpad Mini. Uh, and you can ab enable that feature um, from this uh, launch options button menu. So essentially, um, if you plug in your launchpad mini uh, and wait a couple of seconds and go back to that same menu, uh, you'll now notice that we have a, a, another option in there for the launchpad. And from here, we can enable and disable launchpad support. Now we do this because uh, we don't want to interfere with other programs that might use the launchpad. So if you've got a copy of Atom 2, uh, you can only use one master program with the launchpad at once, so by default it is disabled. So as you can see from this example, uh, if I uh, go to the menu options and then launch button options and then turn on uh, or connect to the launch pad you'll see that it lights up and those lights correspond to the stacking we have of the neon instances um, and obviously if we press one of those buttons it will arm or unarm that instance now in my implementation uh, the actual buttons on the launch pad will flash when a, uh, a instance is armed and they will glow once we start playback. Now, as I mentioned, this is specifically for the uh, Novation Launchpad uh, Mini Mark III. It may well work with the uh, with the X as well, but uh, I don't think it will work with the Pro as yet. But we're going to look into that. Now, for those of you that are a fan of uh, of Blocks Wave, for instance, uh, and this uh, program is great for building up uh, projects of samples um, and then exporting them to, to other apps. But uh, Neon now accepts uh, zipped projects, so uh, we can now export directly from Blocks Waves into Neon, and uh, that actually creates a folder within the media bay um, of, the, uh, of the same name. And you can see there we've got all our samples there ready to use. 
Now another new feature is the ability to import and export slice data in WAV files. So if I was to drag a WAV, a WAV file that contains a marker or slice data into Neon, you'll notice straight away we get a little prompt saying that it's imported slice information. And if we switch to slice mode, we can see those slices. Now for this to work, you have to drop a WAV file directly into the editor or alternatively open Media Bay and um, switch to the exports tab and load from here. Um, the exports tab can uh, hold um, files of different formats, including WAV files with slice information. Now, the same is also true when you want to uh, export uh, slice information to a WAV file to use within another package, uh, such as Twisted Wave or uh, Auditor. Uh, in this case, uh, you switch to the uh, exported tab and just export the file as a WAV file and the slice information will automatically be embedded within that file. Now I've got this sample uh, which I've loaded and I'm just going to play this back. Now, unless you're one of those rare individuals that has perfect pitch, uh, it's hard to know exactly what note that was. But we've now got this sample tuner built in that allows us to uh, take the guesswork out of it. Um, it can detect both the note or the uh, frequency of the note. Now, because I've got warp enabled, I can actually uh, long press on that warp and go up a semitone to uh, an F. Now if I single tap in the uh, display area of the tuner, it will change mode and display frequencies instead of notes, which is quite useful. Now that's great, but it's doing that in real time and that's of little use if we want to export this sample to another application. But if we long press on the walk button, you'll see that there's a new button being added to this, uh, this toolbar called flatten, which will flatten the warp and once done it will turn the warp off and we have the actual sample uh, pitch if you don't want one semitone and rendered as a file so now we can save that off and export that to another application so this is a handy feature if you want to uh, pitch shift uh, a sample or if you want to uh, make it conform to a different tempo so by setting up the warp and original tempos and then rendering that you can take a wave that was say at 118 beats per minute and render it at say 150 beats per minute now one important addition that was added a couple of versions back and i never actually documented was the ability to lock a selection so as you can see here we have a loop set uh, and uh, the attempt to scroll the screen or even zoom in and lo and behold we've lost the, the selection now that happens to the best of us uh, however careful you are now you'll notice that we have some little blue chevrons in the top corner of some of these icons on display now in previous versions they were all shaded gray uh, to signify that there was an extended uh, function associated with that button. Uh, the blue um, signifies that there is a swipe gesture associated with that button. Now if we long press, say, the loop button, it will select and loop the whole of that sample. So that was a shortcut to make a selection. But if you now swipe down on that loop button, it will lock the selection. It doesn't matter what you do from that point onwards, a locked sele selection uh, cannot be removed uh, by accidental touch. So long pressing the loop button will select all but in an unlocked state and a swipe down will select all in a locked state. So that's quite handy. Also a swipe right on the select button will also toggle the current locked state. So let's take a quick look at some of the other swipe gestures we've added. Now you can see here we've loaded in a bit of a drum pattern and uh, we, we don't know the original tempo. So the way uh, which we can do it now is we could just simply swipe down on the tempo uh, button and it will estimate the tempo. 
and that's been estimated at 118 beats per minute. Now it's 99.9% .9 accurate on rhythmic patterns. Um, we can loop back just to see if it sounds correct. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a nice little shortcut there. Now if you're using the warp feature uh, to be able to transpose and, uh, and stretch, time stretch, um, you want to ensure that the original tempo is set up correctly. And you can now do that by simply swiping down on the warp button itself and it will set up the original tempo for you. And once that's set correctly we can adjust the master uh, tempo to uh, time stretch to, uh, to any tempo. So just to clarify for those that are unfamiliar with the warp, a swipe down on the warp button will set the original tempo of the loop. And that is important if you want to use the warp feature. A swipe down on the actual uh, global tempo will set the global tempo to that of the loop. Now another button that has the blue chevron is the grid button. And as we swipe down on the grid, you can see it toggles the grid on and off. And that's good for selections. Now if we're wanting to limit the recording length, we can swipe down on the record button and we can quickly select the record length uh, feature. Swiping, swiping right on the clipboard button will duplicate the selection. So that's quite a handy feature. Now if we tap and hold on the zoom button, it zooms to selection. Whereas if we swipe right, it zooms out to, uh, fill, to allow the sample to fill the whole screen. So uh, quite a handy one there. And finally, as we uh, mentioned earlier, a swipe uh, right on the select will toggle the locked state of the selection. So there's a lot to take in there. Now, while these aren't important to learn, uh, they're nice time saving shortcuts. So the last thing we want to look at really today is the new, um, the new synchro start feature uh, called uh, clip end. Now, as you can see here, I have two clips uh, and they're both stacked and uh, I'm just going to loop this, this first clip and if I start playback uh, of one clip and then uh, start, and then click on the next clip you'll see that they both play at the same time even though they're part of the same stack people have asked me uh, why is that? Why, why aren't they excluding each other? and the reason is because you need to set up the synchro start to either exclusive or to this new mode we call clip ends now we're asked whether we want to set this to all items within the stack and I've said yes. So now when we start the transport going and start playing the first clip um, and we toggle the second clip, uh, the second clip will start playing only when the first clip's ended. And if we go back to the first clip you'll notice even though it's a different length, it only plays when the playing clip has ended. And it's the same when you stop as well. Play stops when the current clip is finished. Now if you have instances of Neon that are stacked like this on the same uh, vertical uh, channel, then most of the options you pick in, in here uh, will ask you whether you want to apply that change to the whole stack. So if we try and change the quantize, it will ask us whether we want to set that for the whole stack. And you can say yes or no. Now we've even applied that to some other features such as changing the colour now. So if you want to change the, the colour uh, that's reported uh, to say the launch pad, we can now change that colour uh, throughout the whole uh, instances within that stack. And one really, really important thing is if you've got multiple uh, instances in a stack like this, is you should always go into settings and turn audio, to, uh, audio monitor on and then set that throughout the stack so the audio can pass straight through that channel and uh, one uh, instance is not muting another. So that just about concludes all the changes to version 1.11. Uh, hopefully there'll be lots more to come soon. Uh, I hope you uh, found something useful from this video. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Uh, thumb up the video and I will see you soon. I'm just going to play out with this little piece from Greg Riker. Uh, see you next time.